stoichiometric proportion. A common concept that is encountered in chemical engineering is that of stoichiometric proportion. For example, one frequently comes across the sentence, reactants are supplied in stoichiometric proportion in problem statements. It is usually associated with processes involving chemical reactions, although that does not always have to be the case. What stoichiometric proportion tells us is that neither a relative shortage nor a relative excess of reactants are fed to the process, and thus that, should the reaction be allowed to go to completion, all the reactants would be consumed. Apart from the qualitative information conveyed by the term stoichiometric proportion, it also carries implicit with it quantitative information that can be expressed by means of equations and which you need to use in order to solve chemical engineering problems. Many times students who don't use these equations end up lacking su sufficient information to fully solve the problem at hand. Let's see an example. Imagine that we have a reactor where gaseous hydrogen and nitrogen are provided in stoichiometric proportion to produce ammonia. Based solely on this information, i.e the reactants are provided in stoichiometric proportion. We are able to immediately deduce that the molar fraction of hydrogen is three times that of nitrogen in streams A and S. This information can be expressed using the equation shown. Since the reactants will always be consumed in the reactor in stoichiometric proportion, if the reactants in stream A are fed to the system in stoichiometric proportion, then what reactants remain in stream S must also be in stoichiometric proportion. This is a specific example involving molar flow rate, where it is possible to see that reactants are in stoichiometric proportion in both the inlet and outlet streams. Let's consider a more familiar example to illustrate the above point. Imagine that you are making little packets of sweets for a children's birthday party. Each little packet consists of a bag into which you are to put exactly three lollipops. Ten children will be attending the party, which means that you will have to buy ten bags. Since three lollipops are to be introduced into each bag, you will need to buy 30 of them. You could then say that the lollipops have been bought in stoichiometric proportion according to the number of bags they are to be packaged in. In this way, it is easy to see that the number of lollipops you need to buy are three times the number of bags. We can express this information using the equation shown. Now imagine that in the end only eight children attend the party. Therefore, what remains? two bags and six lollipops are still in stoichiometric proportion. We now, now go back to the nitrogen example because there is more to be said about it. If stream A consists of only nitrogen and hydrogen in stoichiometric proportion, i.e. it contains no other substance, then we can immediately deduce that the molar fractions are 0.75 hydrogen and 0.25 nitrogen. This is so because the molar fractions of the components of a stream must always add up to one. Now let's complicate matters a little. Say we include a separation unit that splits stream S into two new streams, one containing all the ammonia formed and the other containing the unreacted reactants. We see that stream F still supplies nitrogen and hydrogen to the process in stoichiometric proportion. The separation unit sends all the ammonia in stream S to stream O. Stream R contains only nitrogen and hydrogen that are obviously in stoichiometric proportion. Finally, the nitrogen and hydrogen in stream M are also in stoichiometric proportion. Based solely on the knowledge that stream F supplies nitrogen and hydrogen in stoichiometric proportion, we can automatically say that the molar fraction of hydrogen is three times that of nitrogen in streams F, M, S and R. Furthermore, in streams containing only nitrogen and hydrogen, streams F, M and R, the molar fractions of their components are known, 0.75 hydrogen and 0.25 nitrogen. This information might be very useful when solving mass balance problems involving chemical reactions if it is known that the reactants are provided in stoichiometric proportion. If the student is not able to make use of these expressions, it is quite likely that he or she will not have enough information to fully solve the problem. We complicate the situation a little further. Once again, the feed stream contains reactants in stoichiometric proportion. In this case, however, as a result of the quality of the reactants, an inert substance has been introduced to the system. There are, in theory, three things that could happen to the inert, inert when it leaves the separation unit. All of it could end up in the product stream, stream O. All of it could end up with the reactants in the recycle stream, stream R. Or it could end up in both streams. Let's consider the situation where all of the inert ends up in stream R. 
If we want to maintain a steady state regime, it will be necessary to force the inert out of the system, otherwise it will accumulate. To force the inert out of the system, we will have to use a purge stream. You are advised to see the video in this series dealing with the purge concept. Let's use equations to see what reactants fed in stoichiometric proportion means in this situation. The molar fraction of hydrogen is three times that of nitrogen in streams F, M, S, V, R and P. Furthermore, it would be easy to determine the molar fractions of hydrogen and nitrogen in streams F, M, R, V and P, provided that the molar fraction of the inert in those streams is known beforehand.